This next mini lecture is about John Muir. Basically, in the first part of this presentation, I've gathered some useful quotes which assess Muir's legacy and describe his contributions to American ecology and society, both as a nature writer and an early environmentalist. Please review this presentation in accordance with these readings by Muir about the National Park System and the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir that are in your textbook. Please read the brief passages in these first few slides, which will hopefully give you an overview of Muir's importance as a pioneering preservationist. Basically, Muir lived by the principle that the human spirit was elevated by nature. So being outside in the natural world, world served a morally and spiritually elevating purpose for humankind. It was the responsibility of the government to make this experience available to the greatest number of citizens. In advocating for national parks, Muir sought to bring this belief in the power of nature to this, to its logical end. A democratic society, argued Muir, makes it possible for all of its citizens to experience the glory of nature. And this idea takes shape in the establishment of the national park system, which provides access to the best natural experiences on the American continent. Over time, however, Muir's preservationist impulses stood in contrast to the conservation, conservationist habits of his fellow advocates for nature. Correction, Pinchot was a superintendent, not a president. Pinchot believed in a policy of sensible use of natural resources, realizing that nature held materials and scenic resources that were a potential benefit to humankind and that would also serve human needs. This abstract debate would later assume practical form in the debate over California's Hetch Hetchy Valley, which resided just within the newly established Yosemite National Park. In what is arguably America's first environmentalist debate, the future of the city of San Francisco was at, at stake as officials debated whether to build a dam across the scenic Hetch Hetchy Valley to create a water source for the city of San Francisco, which was rebuilding after being devastated by the 1906 earthquake. Here's what the same place looks like today. And here is the sequence of events that led to the construction of the O'Shaughnessy Dam, which enclosed the Hetch Hetchy Valley. Notice the last point. Given California's ongoing water problems and the growing obsolescence of the Hetch Hetchy Dam, today's journalists and policy makers have floated the basic possibility of tearing down the dam in an attempt to restore the valley. 
This debate will surely intensify as the conflict over water use in California proceeds as a result of ongoing droughts. And lastly, here's a map of the system that provides San Francisco's water today. Think about how the two readings by Muir reflect and comment upon his belief in the power of nature and the benefit it brings to humankind. Then think about the uh, resources made available by the damming of Hetch Hetchy and the construction of the aqueduct that brings water to San Francisco. Think of this as the conflict between the conservationist viewpoints that Pinchot stood for and that held for a policy of sensible use to natural resources and the preservationist attitudes that Muir stood for which believed that uh, things in nature should be left alone and regarded for their uh, most beneficial purposes.